Hi everyone, my name is Rachel and welcome to The French Seams. Thanks so much for joining me again for another video. This is slightly different content than you might be used to. So in this video, I'd like to uh, share my findings of my new sewing machine. So a little review and demo of that. And uh, at the same time, do a little tote bag sew along so you can see it in action. So normal content will resume after this. So last year um, I had a large birthday, one with a zero in it, and I was very, very lucky to be able to upgrade my machine. So um, I was able to buy a machine along with some help from uh, some lovely family members. So this review isn't sponsored in any way. Uh, it's not a PR. It's basically just my opinion on my lovely new sewing machine, which might help some of you if you're in the market for a new sewing machine too. So I don't live near any sewing machine shops, so I wasn't really able to go and try any out. So I really had to do all my um, reviewing online. And I did put a shout out on my channel um, a good few months ago, actually, for any recommendations. And I got some great feedback and I found an, an online shop in Ireland called sewingmachines.ie. So I gave them a shout and the staff there were very, very helpful um, listening to what I needed it for. And uh, they put, put forward a few um, good examples that I might find useful. So I did a lot of review on them. Um, I looked at a lot of videos online. I found excellent tutorials and I finally rounded on the Juki. So this is the HLZ G220, which I really, really like. So this is the manual, which is great. And um, this manual is also online as well. I'll link it below. So it has some really, really useful information. It's really great. Um, I found it super useful in setting up everything and learning how to do each of the techniques. So I've had it now for a couple of months and I must say I'm finding it really, really good. So I started with a brother machine. I'll pop in a picture here. I've had that for around six years and it served me very, very well. It's absolutely perfect, but I really wanted to upgrade. So I'm absolutely delighted with the machine I have now. So it does have the computerized element, which I really wanted um, as a slight upgrade, just the manual machine before. And I must say it's a total game changer. I really, really enjoy it. So this machine comes with the usual power cable foot pedal, although I don't really use the foot pedal now at all. I use the start stop button, which I really like. You'll see that in the video. It then also comes with um, a number of feet. So things like the buttonhole foot, um, the one for doing decorative stitching an overcasting stitch, which is great. It almost does a little overlocker stitch, uh, a blind stitch and also a zipper foot as well. So it comes with all these little bits and bobs, which is really useful. And then also you can obviously buy different feet. They seem to have feet for every single thing you could possibly imagine to complement this machine. So it's an excellent starting point anyway, whatever you get out of the box. The features that I really, really like about it are the start stop button. I think that's really great. Um, and also the automatic needle threader. So putting your um, thread through the eye of the needle. So it does that for you. You just lower a little lever, which I find really, really helpful. And also probably my favorite part of it actually is the automatic thread cutters. So when you get to the end of a seam, you can just press a button and it snips the threads for you and you can just lift your presser foot and take the fabric off the machine straight away. So I found that really, really useful. It's pretty straightforward to use. As I said, the instruction manual is really, really good. It's quite intuitive. It's quite a sturdy machine, so it does feel very solid. On the flip side of that, though, it is quite a heavy machine. So if you are going out and about to classes or are transporting your machine a lot, you might need to think about that because it is slightly heavier than, than some machines I've used previously. But um, yeah, it does feel nice and sturdy because of that. The one downside is, and I say the one downside, um, it doesn't alert you when your bobbin is going to run out. So we still have to play bobbin chicken, but that's fine. We'll deal with it. I think all the pluses of the machine greatly overshadow that. So all in all, it's a really, really fabulous machine. Um, so I go into some detail in the video, not everything, obviously. There are other things that um, they've outlined in the manual, which I think would be really, really useful. So things like um, quilting, uh, sharing, gathering. It does a nice applique stitch, a nice scallop stitch. Which I, I think those would be really good fun. Um, it helps you do pin tucks and welt pockets. And of course, there's really good um, instructions on how to do zips. I don't do a huge amount of zips. I really should start doing more. Um, so it's really, really great. Um, I'm really enjoying using it. I think it's a really great machine. I've gotten really well with it now for the past few months and I'm looking forward to, to using a few of the um, extra little bells and whistles that it comes with. So that's my little tiny review of the machine. As I say, it's not sponsored in any way. This is purely my opinion. If you do have any comments on it after you've seen the video, please just let me know. But um, now I'll scoot forward onto the actual demo and video itself and I'll catch up with you guys again at the other end. So here's the fabric you need. You need two pieces of your main fabric, two pieces for lining and two straps. So these four rectangles measure 10 inches by nine inches and then the straps measure 11 inches by two and a half inches. Once you've them all cut out, we can get started. 
and here's the machine. So here's the display panel. So it's just displaying the, the first available stitch. And here's your needle. I've just got it loaded with a universal needle and the standard presser foot. Here's where you load your bobbin. This bit flaps down, which is handy little storage. And then all of this pops off um, in case you want to sew sleeves and stuff, which is really handy. As I mentioned before, I haven't really been using the presser foot. I've been using this uh, stop start button, which I find really, really handy. And then this little flap at the top flaps up. And here's your cheat sheet for all your available stitching. Here's where you load your thread and here's where you load your bobbin. So now what we're going to do is load some black thread. So I've now got the spool loaded with some black thread and I've just got a regular spool. So now what we're going to do is wind the thread around number one, back around number two, and then into the little hole at the top of the bobbin. And then load it on this and then push this little cap in here. And then you can see the button down here has moved from red to orange, which means it's loaded correctly. Keeping hold of this up here and press go. So that should be enough for the time being. So I've just pressed the stop button and your bobbin is ready to go. Now we're ready to load our needle thread. So grabbing your thread, you move it around number one and then around number two, all the way down to number three, back up and through this little gap here, number four, and then down to the needle. And here's where the clever bit is because you could loop it through the needle straight away or you can use the automatic needle threader, which I think is really, really cool. And I'll show you how to do that right now. So to use the automatic needle threader, you use this lever right here. So lower it halfway, wrap the thread around this little hook, then push it all the way and these little teeth pop out. Line up the thread inside the teeth, release the lever and the thread appears through the eye of the needle. So I'll do that again just to make sure you can see properly. So pull down the needle halfway, wrap the thread around the hook, pull it all the way down so you can see the teeth through the teeth, release the needle and it pops through the eye of the needle. And there we go, needle threaded. Now we'll load our bobbin. So you pop open the little case here and load it this way with the thread coming out of the top. And then inside, around the little hook inside, through number two in the teeth, all the way around number three, clearly marked, and tear it off and it's loaded and put back on the cover. And no need to pull the bobbin thread up. The machine will do that automatically when it starts sewing. And now we'll start our sewing. So with right sides together with your main fabric, pin the three edges here and sew all the way around the three sides with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So to start stitching, I'll use a straight stitch and it's zero, zero, just a regular basic straight stitch with the normal um, foot. And I'll line up my fabric with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. You can see the light here is red, but that's because the um, foot is up. Once you put the foot down in position, that light turns green and that means you're ready to start stitching. When you get to the end, you can use this button up here with the little scissors, and that means it cuts the needle threads for you. The light turns red and then green. You can lift your press of it and your fabric is ready. Once you've graded the seam allowances of both the main fabric and the lining fabric, you can leave them as is and just turn them right sides out and give them a good press, or you can box off the bottom of the bag, which I quite like doing. So to do that, the little point here, you need to make into a triangle. So pull these out and you can line up the seams. You can just feel with your fingers the seams on both sides and that'll give a nice finish. And then it's become a little triangle with the seam in the middle and you can pin that. And then depending on how big you want the box stuff bottom to be, usually I make it maybe an inch. So we're going to sew across here on our sewing machine. And 
once you've turned it right sides out, this is what it looks like then. So this is the bottom seam of the bag. Now with right sides together, pin your lining fabric together along these three sides. However, this time we're going to sew all the way around except leave a small little about two and a half inch wide gap down the bottom here and back stitching at either end. This is uh, so we can turn the whole thing through later. So be sure to leave that little gap here. So now let's get to sewing these three sides. So once we've squared off the edges of the lining and the main fabric, you can turn them right sides out and then um, just press down the seam allowance of the little gap we left earlier. That'll make it easier to sew that shut when we've turned out the bag later. So on to the next step. Getting your two strap pieces, I've now pressed them right sides together and folded them along the long edge and pinned them. And now we're going to sew along each of these long edges at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. At this point I should mention all the other stitches the machine can do. So these ones up here are just your basic straight stitch, zigzag stitch, lightning stitch. These ones are um, overcasting stitch, so a bit like your overlocker. Then you move into buttonholes and then these are more overcasting ones here. And then uh, these are all the decorative buttonholes. And then these move into the more decorative ones, so little, nice little quilting ones, uh, little flowers, hearts, Christmas trees. And then down here you've got letters, so I'll show you what all these do later. The ones I use most often obviously are just the straight stitch, the lightning stitch and the zigzag stitch for knits and I find them all really really good. Especially because you can alter the stitch width and stitch length as well by using the up and down buttons here. So depending on what length and width you want your stitches, which is really really good. And then you change program by just using these buttons here. So you can see here I'm on number three, which corresponds to zigzag. Now that we've sewn um, our two straps along the long edge we're just going to turn them right sides out and I find the easiest way to do that is to tuck in a safety pin and pull it all the way through. I've now turned the straps the right side out and give them a good press with the seam to one side. So I've now changed my thread to be a contrasting colour. I thought it'd be fun to personalise this little bag. So I've switched um, the foot. So this is the foot that you do the decorative stitches with. It comes in the pack. I've also put a little tiny bit of interfacing on the white fabric just because it's quite thin. And I uh, will have a look at the letter stitching. So if you refer to your little cheat sheet up here, you'll see the new presser foot here and we need to turn the machine to ABC. So over here on your keypad, you press the little heart button and you can see it's moved to ABC and then we can start doing our letters. So I'm going to do my name. So basically you make it, you put in the letter that you want. So I'll start with R, so 17. Then you press go, then you move to the next letter, which is going to be A00. And you keep going until your full name is complete. So let's give it a go. First letter is 17. And then you press start. And it'll come to a natural stop when it's finished. And then you put in your next letter, which is A. So I'll move this to zero, zero. And press go again. Keep going with that for the rest of my name and check back with you when it's done. So I'm just putting on the last letter which is number 11 and press go again. Snip my threads and let's look to see what it looks like. Now that's not bad. I'd now like to show you the buttonhole setting on the machine. So I was going to attach this nice little ribbon to the front of the bag as a nice little detail. So I found this um, 
little snap here that's roughly the same size. So what you do is you slot this into the little holder at the back of this button foot and that then knows exactly how um, big the buttonhole is meant to be. You pull down this little lever here so it comes between these two notches. So that's how it figures out the length of the buttonhole. You switch it to number nine, which is the buttonhole setting. You can see it even shows you which foot to use over here. And then I've got it lined up in the correct place for my button and we just press go. And now it's finished. So we'll snip our threads and have a look at our buttonhole. There you go. So I'll just snip that to open it. I'll do another one just to the side of it so we can tie in our ribbon. And here are our finished buttonholes. So I've just snipped them there to open them and then we can thread the ribbon through later and tie a nice bow for the front of the bag. The next step is to base the handles to the lining. So I've put a pin in the centre of the bag and then I've put pins where the quarter of the bag is, both front and back. And you take your strap, I like to do it with the seam to the inside and on the front and back you pin the handles like this and like this on the other side facing downwards so then when we turn the bag out later they'll pop up to the top. So you now do this front and back. I've now pinned on my straps front and back. I've put back on my regular presser foot. Um, I've set the machine back to zero zero which is just your regular straight stitch and I can now increase my stitch length to say 3.2 to make a good long basting stitch and I'm then going to stitch it all the way around within the seam allowance just to baste it. The next thing to do is put the lining fabric inside the main fabric, right sides together, and pin at the side seams, pin all the way around, and then stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. We're almost at the very end. Now we're just going to turn the whole thing right sides out using the little gap we left the last time and pull everything through that. And here we go. So just tuck in the lining. And here we go. So now we'll just give that a really good press. So I've given the bag a nice press and I've just pulled out the lining because we just need to close off this little gap here. You could hand stitch it or slip stitch, but I just like to just machine stitch, um, edge stitch at the very, very edge just to finish off the lining. And then we can tuck back the lining inside the bag. And there we go. So I think the last step I like to do is to top stitch around the edge just to keep the lining nice and tucked in. But I think um, for this demonstration, I'll use a decorative stitch for that. So because the pattern on the bag is little hearts, I thought it'd be cute to do a heart decorative stitch. So I turn the machine down to the heart setting, which is a decorative stitch. And then the heart is number 29. So put in 29. And then I'll just top stitch the little hearts all the way around the edge of the bag. So that's done the top stitching all the way around and these are the little hearts which i think look very cute yeah and this is our bag pretty much done apart from our little ribbon so thank you so much for joining me so i hope you found that useful Here's the little bag we made. 
So super happy with that. This fabric is from Quilt Yarn Stitch, a lovely um, heart fabric. And the little ribbon is from my Kylie in the Machine Advent Calendar, which I was really happy to repurpose. And then the lining fabric is this beautiful white embroidered cotton from Crafty Studio. So I'll link all that below as well. So here you go. Here's our little tote bag that we made together. So yes, delighted with this. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you liked this sew along. I hope you liked the review. If you do have any comments about any of the content, please just let me know in the comment box below. I'd be delighted to help you out. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing. And I'll be back very shortly with my regular content. Take care, everybody. Bye.